earnestly pursue love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries in the Spirit, but he who prophesies speaks to men for their edification, encouragement, and comfort. The one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I wish that all of you could speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Even in the case of lifeless instruments, such as the flute or harp, how will anyone recognize the tune they are playing unless the notes are distinct? Again, if the trumpet sounds a muffled call, who will prepare for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Assuredly, there are many different languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If, then, I do not know the meaning of someone's language, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and he is a foreigner to me. It is the same with you. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, strive to excel in gifts that build up the church. Therefore the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Father, thank you once again for this time that we can look upon your word. Help us in the power of the Holy Spirit to understand them and apply them in our hearts so that we may be conformed to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is your very image and likeness. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. In chapter 14, the Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, begins to give practical advice regarding the use of the charismatic gifts in service to the body of Christ. Now, let's look at the broader context one more time, because context is important. Charismatic gifts are to be used by believers in their service to the body of Christ, which is the church. This chapter draws a contrast between the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. Tongues, in essence, is associated with prayer, while prophecy, on the other hand, means to declare God's word, not necessarily future events. It just means to declare the word of God. Old Testament prophets declare the word of God to the people, and sometimes they declare God's rebuke. And sometimes they declare God's call to repentance. And sometimes they declare God's word concerning future events. But prophecy is not limited to future events only. And the same is true in this context. The gift of prophecy is about declaring God's word or speaking God's word over a situation although at times it could involve telling future events. But that is what the gift of prophecy is. It is about speaking the authority of God's word with conviction over a situation as the Holy Spirit enables the believer. One thing is clear, however, that the Apostle Paul is not saying you have to choose the gift of tongues or the gifts of prophecy. Rather, in the service to the church, the gift of prophecy which seeks to illuminate God's word is more beneficial in edifying the congregation over the gift of tongues because the gift of tongues is to be used by individuals in prayer. Thereby, when they pray in tongues, they edify themselves. But when you uh, utter a word of prophecy, meaning you declare the word of God, you are edifying the congregation. And so we are going to look at three things today. The priority of the gift of prophecy, verses 1 to 5, the purpose of the gift of prophecy, verses 6 to 9, and the power of the gift of prophecy, verses 10 to 14. First, let's look at the priority of the gift of prophecy in verses 1 to 5. In verse 1, we are to speak the truth in love. Verse 1 reads, Earnestly pursue love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Notice that the Apostle Paul wants the church to pursue the spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Now, I want you to think what this means. Because what this means is that not everyone has the gift of prophecy 
or the gift of declaring God's word or speaking God's word with conviction over situations. Not everyone has that. But the Apostle Paul wants all of us to pursue that gift. How do you pursue the gift of prophecy or speaking God's word if you do not know the word of God? That is why it is important to know God's word, not only intellectually, but experientially. So we need to study the word of God. That's great. But we also need to experience it through our daily lives and through the trials and testings that we face. When we face these trials and testings and we are assured of God's word, we become more convinced as to the truthfulness and power of scriptures, so much so that we can declare them without hesitation. So all of us must pursue this, and in doing so, we must speak the truth of God's word in love. We see that in verse 1. Again, if I can paraphrase verse 1, it would say something like, eagerly run after love and the ability to declare God's word over situations in your lives that do not match God's eternal promises to us. For example, if your family is in turmoil, begin to declare the promise of God that He is the Lord of your family and that He is the Lord of peace. If you are sick, begin to declare the truth of God's word that He is your healer. If you are lacking financially, begin to declare and release the blessings of God over your finances. And no, this is not prosperity gospel. And no, this is not positive affirmation. This is about applying the promises of God's word into your situation with obedience, and with faith. Speak the truth of God's word over your situation and the situation of others in love. Look at Ephesians 4.15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Christ himself, who is the head. That's how we grow. We grow in Christ Jesus by speaking his word in love. And as we speak the truth of God's word over our brother's situation, we also need to show the truth with our lives. Verses 2 to 3, which reads, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries in the spirit. But he who prophesies speaks to men for their edification, encouragement, and comfort. So the Apostle Paul draws the first contrast between tongues and prophecy at this point. The point of the Apostle Paul is simply this. When we pray in tongues, we speak to God. But when we declare the truth of God's word, we speak it to men. And we do so for our brothers and sisters' edification, encouragement, and comfort. And if we will engage in that gifting, the truth better be seen in our lives. How can I encourage my brother and sister if they don't see that in my own life? How can I say to them, be encouraged, while I am a nervous wreck? That wouldn't match, would it? The word of God we declare must be seen in our lives. Uh, Look at 1 John 3, 18. Little children, let us love not in word and speech, but in action and truth. Again, love should be the motivation for serving, and it better be seen in us. And the words we declare are not mere words because they are God's truth that must be evident in our lives. And we also need to be able to share the truth of God's word to the church, according to verses 4 to 5. Verse 4 to 5 reads, The one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I wish that all of you could speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Again, the Apostle Paul said it was his wish that all of the church speak in tongues. Because praying in tongues is powerful. There is power in praying in the Spirit. But he also said that he would rather that all of us prophesy or declare God's truth into the lives of our brethren. Tongues is for personal prayer, but the clarity of speaking the truth of God's word benefits the church. The priority of prophecy in a church setting takes precedence over speaking in tongues unless there is an interpretation of the speaking in tongues. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 to 18 says, After that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Now pay attention to to verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words. We are supposed to encourage one another with the word of God. That is the priority of the gift of prophecy so that all of us can give an encouragement to one another. 
The priority of the gift of prophecy is evidenced by us speaking the truth in love, showing the truth with our lives, and sharing the truth of God's Word with the rest of the body of Christ. Now, let us look at the purpose. Why does the Apostle Paul want every one of us to pursue the gift of prophecy or declaring God's Word over certain situations in our lives with conviction according to verses uh, 6 to 9 of 1 Corinthians 14? The reason why this is important is because the gift of prophecy allows us to release the truth of God's word as a blessing to the church according to verse 6. Verse 6 reads, Now brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? But praying in tongues, while it is important, does not release blessing because tongues is the utterance of mysteries to God. So that even the person speaking in tongues does not know what they're praying for. So they have to pray with their minds. Whereas prophecy is the clear declaration of God's word that is understandable. It allows us to release the truth over our brother or sister's situation, thereby blessing them and encouraging them. I will give you an example. If I pray for a brother who is discouraged and the Spirit of God prompts me to declare his truth over his situation, like when I pray over a person and say, Fear not, for the Lord your God is with you. When you walk through the waters, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. If I pray that as the Spirit prompts me, then I just encourage my brother clearly from God's Word, which they can understand, unlike a prayer in tongue. So sometimes when I pray over a person, I speak in tongues, but then I ask the Lord to give me an interpretation so that I may speak it prophetically over them. That is why the Apostle Paul wants all Christians to pursue the gift of prophecy. He wants us to be rooted in God's Word, experience it in our lives, and then be able to declare it forcefully over the situation of your brother and sister. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19-20 says there, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of us are to speak to one another the truth of God's Word. Another purpose of the gift of prophecy is to rouse the truth of God's Word and build the church up according to verses 7 to 9. Verses 7 to 9 reads, Even in the case of lifeless instruments such as the flute or harp, how will anyone recognize the tune they are playing unless the notes are distinct? Again, if the trumpet sounds a muffled call, who will prepare for battle? So it is with you, unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Now, let me ask you this. Have you watched a movie without a soundtrack? Movies without soundtrack would be boring because the music helps convey the emotion of the scene. Same thing with the gift of prophecy. When you listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and utter the truth of His Word over a person's situation, You have just roused that person to faith. Or like in verse 8, music also rouses us for battle. That's why armies have drum and trumpet lines. It rouses the troops to fight. Same thing when you speak the truth of God's word over a person's situation by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you would have roused your brother to faith and built him up. And by the way, the key here is to listen to what the Holy Spirit is prompting you to say. You cannot just quote any verse. And this is where it takes a while to develop. But don't worry, if you make a mistake and utter the truth of God's word and that is not what God wants you to utter, God, like the good father he is, will cover the mistakes of his children. And I firmly believe that. But take the time to learn and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That's the key. Ephesians 4.29 says there, Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. So the gift of prophecy is for blessing our brother and building them up. Now let's look at the power of the gift of prophecy. When we begin to use the gift of prophecy, it will endear us to one another, according to verses 10 to 11. Verses 10 to 11 reads, Assuredly, there are many different languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not know the meaning of someone's language, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and he is a foreigner to me. Again, comparing it to the gift of tongues, tongues becomes foreign to us because when we speak in tongues, the people hearing us doesn't understand a thing of what we've just spoken. 
But when we speak the intelligible word of God over our brother or sister's situation, they can understand it. It is not foreign like prayer in tongues. And when you say foreigner, there will be barriers between two foreign people, right? But when there is clarity in our communication, it draws us together. The same is true for the gift of prophecy over the gift of tongue. Now again, this is not either or. There is a place for praying in tongues in a personal setting, but prophecy is clear and draws us to one another. I am sure your brother whom you blessed and built up with your declaration of God's word will be grateful to you. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 says, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree together so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be united in mind and conviction. The gift of prophecy also empowers us, according to verse 12. It reads, It is the same with you, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, strive to excel in gifts that build up the church. When we pursue that, we will excel in the gifts that build up the church. It will empower you and the person you are praying for or speaking to. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 7 says, In truthful speech and in the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left. And I just wanted you to look at the uh, relation between truthful speech and the power of God. There is power in God's word, and God wants us to unleash that in our lives and in the lives of our brethren. Lastly, the power of God's word will enlighten us, verses 13 to 14. Therefore, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. I shared this a while ago. Sometimes when I pray for someone, I speak in tongues. But as soon as that happens, I already begin praying for an interpretation so that the person may know what I just prayed for in the Spirit. And that is why in our pursuit of the gift of prophecy, we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit so we can know what God wants us to speak. Psalm 119 verses 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the power of the gift of prophecy endears us to one another, it empowers us for more excellent service, and it enlightens us. It gives us light to the possible dark situation uh, a brother or sister may be facing in, and then we utter the truth of God's word, and it, it speaks rema to them. The rema word of God is activated in them, and they are roused to faith, and they are built up, and they continue in the faith. So today we looked at the priority of the gift of prophecy the purpose of the gift of prophecy and the power of the gift of prophecy, which simply means to declare the truth of God's word. I only have one question for you. Are you eagerly desiring the gift of prophecy so you may edify the body of Christ? And I pray that you are. One thing that I desire of you, this is what I see.